He thought he was helping a lost soul. Lee is the type of person he tries to help. He would talk to anybody and try to help him. But his compassion only fueled her obsession to be with him. She wasn't taking no for an answer. She said, if I can't have him, nobody can. This is Lee Redmond's story. Will unrequited love become a fatal attraction? I'm Dr. Michelle Ward. I'm a criminal psychologist and I was stalked. In fact, anyone can become a victim. Over three million people are stalked every year in this country. Although many survive their ordeal, others don't. These are their terrifying stories. She starts acting wild and crazy, and she pulls a gun on him. And he called her bluff, grabs her hand, and points the gun right to his chest and says, you want to shoot me? Then do it. Lee Redmond grows up alongside two sisters and one brother in Riverside, California. 60 miles east of LA. He was very outgoing as far as personality. Um, people liked him instantly. Everybody liked him. We were really close. He was a perfect big brother, always, always protecting me. Lee was just the most generous person to give you the shirt off his back. He was just a happy person, always positive. In 1981, Lee moves to Las Vegas. There, he meets Renee, a young nurse. The two share an instant connection. He was really laid back. He was, he was funny. We were inseparable after that. They were just really cute around each other whenever I would see him. So I was really happy for my brother and for Renee. After dating for some time, Lee proposes to Renee, and the couple ties the knot on April 2nd, 1994. One year later, Renee gives birth to a baby girl they name Lexus. It was the happiest day of my life. I can't even remember being any, any happier. Lee was so excited to be a dad. All he talked about was his baby girl, Lexus. He could not have been a more proud father. Oh, it was great. I would see him all the time with her. He really, really loved uh, doting on her. He was a great dad. Soon after, Lee takes a new job as a chauffeur for the MGM Grand Hotel, servicing high rollers and VIPs. We worked together at the MGM in Las Vegas, which was the highest of the high end in limos. We were exposed to a lot of you know, Las Vegas glitz and glamour, you might say. But his job also exposes Lee to the less glamorous side of Las Vegas. And there's the like, kind of the seedy underbelly of Las Vegas that we also get to see. You know? We're going to uh, strip clubs, gentlemen's clubs, these types of things. There will be times when the customer goes into the gentleman's club and we will stay with them and kind of act as a, a, a protector or chaperone. That would happen quite often, actually, yeah. at least, you know, on a weekly basis. One day in 1997, one of Lee's clients asked him to wait for him inside a gentleman's club on the outskirts of town. While there, he strikes up a conversation with one of the club's dancers, 21-year-old Nicole Thornton. As personable as he is, they start up a conversation. Just talking about their lives or their families or how long they've lived in Las Vegas. Lee learns that like him, Nicole is originally from Southern California. She's been struggling to make a life for herself in Las Vegas. She definitely was a, a lost soul. She came from a broken family. She was on her own, no family in town. Nicole confides in Lee that ever since she was robbed when leaving work a few weeks before, she's felt unsafe traveling home alone. Lee feels bad for Nicole and offers her a ride home after he drops off his client. His big brother mode went into action and he wanted to make sure she was okay. He was always like that, always wanting to help people. In the weeks that follow, Lee checks up on the young dancer whenever his work brings him to the club. One night, Nicole again asks him for a ride home after work. 
But when Lee drops her off, she makes a sudden and surprising confession. She tells him that she has fallen in love with him. Lee came across as so nice and kind and respectful to her that she took it the wrong way. She took it for an interest in her. Given their casual acquaintance, Lee is puzzled by Nicole's abrupt revelation and makes it clear that he is happily married. He tried to be nice, tried to reason with her. He did tell her that, you know, I'm married, I have a brand new baby, I'm happy, I have a great family. But I love you. Undeterred, Nicole begs him to reconsider. When her advances grow more and more desperate, Lee becomes increasingly uncomfortable listen, listen, and decides he must break off all ties to the young dancer. He said, I'm not interested, leave me alone. He thought that she got the message. But Nicole would not give up that easily. She begins calling Lee at work, pleading with him to change his mind. She wasn't handling the rejection well. She started acting out. She started calling his work and harassing him. I just want to see. Every time Nicole calls, Lee strongly states that he is not interested and tells her to leave him alone. Stop calling me. What's wrong with you? She wasn't willing to be let off gently. She couldn't take no for an answer. Nicole's obsessive phone calls indicate that she's not going to go away lightly. Even though Lee's saying no, Nicole's not hearing no. We've seen this before where a relationship is is being played out further in one person's mind than it actually is. I think that Nicole's convinced that they are meant to be together. For her, it feels like they're, they're star-crossed lovers and that when the stars realign, they will be together. Nicole calls every day. Then the calling escalates and becomes every hour. His coworkers soon become alarmed. Her calling him constantly and uh, harassing him could have been bad for his job. It became uh, a serious problem. It was very stressful for him to try and figure out what he's going to do to make this all go away. But Lee would soon learn that Nicole has no intention of going away. And that's when uh, things started to spin out of control at that point. I had no idea she was that crazy. Thirty-five-year-old husband and father, Lee Redmond, is being harassed by Nicole Thornton, a 21-year-old exotic dancer. She has been calling him constantly at work to try to gain his attention. Any normal person would think that once you sit down with another adult and tell them what you're feeling or not feeling, that they're going to get the message and they're going to move on. But that didn't work with her. She was relentless. Then, to his relief, just a few weeks later, her calls start to let up. It seemed like things had calmed down a little bit. He thought that everything was going to be OK and that she was finally going to get it. Then, one day in June of 1997, Lee and his wife Renee head out to spend some quality time alone together. I went outside to the car, and there was a note on the, wind the windshield. It said, when you think your man is at home, he's with me. When you think your man's at work, he's with me. Renee is shocked. She immediately turns to Lee for answers. He was really upset and angry. He said, I can't believe she put that on the car, that crazy woman. Lee explains that a woman named Nicole has been stalking him. He didn't want to worry Renee before, since he thought the situation was under control. But now, he finally tells her everything. I think he was trying to keep me as safe as possible and not tell me who she was. He wanted to be the, you know, the strong man to take care of us. But he was frustrated by the things that she was doing. He felt that she was probably not going to leave us alone. Nicole's not taking no for an answer, and she's not slowing down. From Nicole's perspective, the only reason Lee doesn't want to be with her is the fact that he's married. And if she can really test Renee's faith in her husband, then maybe she can get Renee to leave, and then she can have Lee. This is Nicole's next move. She's got to get rid of the wife. So it's not just stressing Lee out. It's really causing a big strain on his family life. Lee and Renee decide to ignore both the letter and its author in hopes that Nicole's harassment will subside once more. 
But before long, Nicole strikes again. One afternoon, as Lee is leaving to pick up a client, he discovers something strange. There was a bag hanging on the door. It had hair and had a picture and some other stuff in it. Apparently, Nicole has concocted a voodoo charm to get Lee's attention. I believe that she thought that she could actually put a spell on Lee. I had no idea she was that crazy. It was very bizarre. I couldn't believe that real people actually do stuff like that. And it began to get a little scary at that point. Nicole's using more and more bizarre methods to try to attain her goal. I mean, she's really reaching out there for anything to help her get Lee. Nothing has worked thus far. I mean, she's kind of harassed Lee, and then she tried to get at his wife, and their marriage was strong, and that didn't work. And now she's asking, you know, the voodoo gods to help her. We're seeing a girl fall apart. Lee was shaken, shaken by, the, by this incident big time. It's, it's creepy. You know, to think that there's someone stalking, that somebody's, you know, stealthing around your house, close to your family, now things are getting serious. Lee realizes that Nicole is becoming increasingly unstable and decides he has no choice but to report her to the police. After all these months of the harassment, he was hopeful that maybe getting the police involved, that would scare her into backing off. But when Lee tells police about the situation, he gets a stunning response. He said, the ladies at the desk laughed at me. He said, I cannot believe that they wouldn't even take me serious. He was devastated. They really made him feel embarrassed and made him feel like he wasn't handling his business and he is some big strong guy and why, why do you need our help? Why can't you just take care of this on your own? He walked away feeling very defeated at that point. Lee and Renee decide they must move to another part of town with an unlisted phone number and address so Nicole can't find them. Lee thought moving would achieve some safety, peace of mind. He can go to work and not have to worry about his family being uh, terrorized by this person. Lee and Renee purchase property and start construction on their new house. But little do they know, Nicole is already plotting her next move. When he told me this story, it completely blew me away. It was something that they make movies out of. Las Vegas limo driver Lee Redman is exhausted after months of being stalked by Nicole Thornton, a 21-year-old exotic dancer. In hopes of escaping her grasp, Lee and his wife Renee have started construction on a new home, taking great care not to share the location with anyone. We were doing plans, we picked up furniture. Things seem to be moving in a positive direction for the both of us. But one day, Lee finds his limousine vandalized, tires slashed, a window broken, scratches all over the car. He was so angry and it was very, very frustrating for him. He was so upset with her. She was getting worse with each time he tried to end the situation. Nicole is still obsessed with Lee. She still wants Lee. She's like a child throwing a tantrum at this point, you know? It's like, she wants Lee, she's not getting her way, she's stomping her feet and acting out. And the way she's acting out now is vandalizing Lee's car. Nicole's ramping up. She's toying with violence. So she's becoming more confident, more brazen and brave, which also can indicate her mental well-being is deteriorating. She could become more dangerous. Lee was uh, very shaken. He's looking at her now as a real physical threat to the family. So Lee was very concerned about the safety of his wife and daughter. Lee is worried about what Nicole might do next and decides that it's time for him to take action. He races over to the young dancer's apartment to confront her. Lee felt, you know, I can solve this. I can talk to her and you know, talk some sense into her, basically. Why are you doing this? Lee tries to convince her to leave him and his family alone. But Nicole becomes increasingly hysterical. 
Lee is shocked by what happens next. She starts, you know, acting wild and crazy, and she pulls a gun on him. He didn't think she had it in her. He never really considered her to be a dangerous threat. And he called her bluff, walks up to her, grabs her hand, and points the gun right to his chest and says, you want to shoot me? Then do it. Finally, Nicole seems to listen to reason and lowers her weapon. She just breaks down and starts crying. So he tells her to stay away from him, stay away from her family, and he thinks that's the end of it. The fact that Nicole's pulling out a gun indicates that either suicide or murder has crossed her mind. She's not quite at the point where she's ready to pull triggers, but she's ramping up. She's in this horrible vortex of just must have and must have and must have, and she's not stable. She doesn't have the faculties to really control herself. She's becoming incredibly dangerous. Lee leaves shaken, but confident that he finally got his message across to Nicole. He thought at that point he had solved the problem. He called her bluff, and she broke down and he now had the upper hand. He figured it was over at that point. But the very next day, Lee discovers that his car has been vandalized yet again. He is beside himself and decides he must confront Nicole once more. I think he went with the intentions of ending this once and for all. He tried everything to make this thing go away and she was persistent. She was obsessed. That is the definition of the word obsessed. I was afraid, because when you, when you force people's hand, they do crazy things. In a fit of anger, Lee Redman returns to his stalker Nicole's apartment to try to put an end to her harassment once and for all. I believe that he thought that if he said, this is it, I'm not gonna have it anymore, that she would stop. And she had a different plan. She had a way different plan. Lee arrives at Nicole's apartment just after midnight. Once again, he demands that she stay away from him and his family. She became very upset, went for her gun, and instead of Lee confronting her like he did the night before, he kind of just turned his back on her and started to walk out the door. You crazy. As he was going down the stairs of her apartment, she shot him. He started to run down the stairs, and that's when she shot him again, and this time it hit him in the lower back. He crawled to the front gate of the complex. It's a horrible thing to know that you have to crawl on your hands and knees to try and find help. Lee manages to get the attention of a passing motorist. She immediately calls 911 and then tries to keep Lee conscious. He was clutching a picture of his daughter, the person that meant the most to him. His last thoughts were of his daughter. He died in the parking lot um, right before the ambulance got there. I was really grateful that there was somebody there so that he just didn't die on the street by himself, that somebody was at least giving him some comfort and talking to him. By dawn, Renee is worried sick. Her husband has not come home. When she hears a knock at the door, she hopes it's Lee. But it's the police, with the worst news she could have ever imagined. And I said, did he fall asleep at the wheel? He said, no, he was shot. I was shot. So then I went to scream, and I started to shake. He then asked me, is there somebody that would harm him? And I said, um, this lady, Nicole, she's the only one that I know that would, that would hurt him. Police discover that Lee died in the parking lot where Nicole lives. They immediately go to her apartment. When the police arrived at Nicole's apartment, they found her in the hallway. Nicole is lying face down in a pool of blood. She has shot herself in the head and has been dead for hours. 
And she had left a note to the effect that if I can't have him, nobody can. She knew exactly what she was going to do. I was so angry because I thought, well, if you're crazy enough to just kill yourself, why didn't you just kill yourself? Why did you have to take my brother with you? I never thought in my wildest dreams that it would end like this. This guy was like one of the nicest people you ever want to meet, just a, an amazing addition to humanity. And for someone to take him away was beyond my imagination. Over time, Renee finds the strength to carry on and begins the hard task of raising her daughter as a single mother. In December of 1997, when construction is complete, she and Lexus move into the house she planned to share with Lee. Lee would be proud that we didn't just stop living. He loved his family. He loved us, and I loved him. In the United States alone, over a thousand people are killed by their stalkers every year. Although female stalkers are rare, they can be just as deadly as their male counterparts. And the damage inflicted is far-reaching. Lee is not the only victim of this crime. He leaves behind a family and loved ones who are forever changed through the tragedy of his untimely death. Neither one of us had a lot of money, but we would double date and then we'd go to dinner or we'd go to a movie or um, we might even just hang out at the house and watch TV. You know, I think they liked a lot of the same things. Lee uh, was really impressed by Renee's values and family values and um, that attracted him to her. So I think that's why they hit it off right away. It was very unfair. Everybody should be treated equally. Um, I'm sure they know that now, but back then it was very biased uh, towards female victims and I'm sure he felt like it was a big waste of time just going down there. He was thinking, you know, I'm going to be somewhere where she doesn't know where I, where I live. He knew that she still knew where he worked, but I'm sure he was going to feel much more safe in a place where she had never been before, and it was going to be like a fresh start for him. He didn't seem like it when we talked, but he was a desperate man trying to find solutions. But he always had an air of calmness about him, how he had control of the situation, but I could feel that it was, it was spinning out of control and that you know, it was gonna come to a head eventually. Why would you even think about going back there? But Lee was fearless, and I'm sure Lee thought that he would be able to handle the situation. Looking back, um, it makes me really angry that law enforcement wasn't more helpful to him. He tried to do the right thing by going to them. And I was so angry for 
months afterwards because I thought there was there had to have been something that could have been done and if they would have been more helpful or more forceful with her and helpful to him it could have been prevented He was never able to live in his new home. He passed away before, and that was just part of the tragedy of everything because he was so excited and so happy to becoming a homeowner and being able to move into a house that he had watched being built from you know the ground up, and he never made it. My sister-in-law has been through so much. I know how hard it's been all these years for her to raise her child and to have Lexus turn out as wonderful as she's turned out. And I'm really proud of her and I'm so proud to still call her my sister-in-law. And I have a wonderful niece who is gonna go on to do really great things. And it just shows uh, what a great parent she is, and I know my, my brother would be so proud to know that she's done such a wonderful job with her.